faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Hello everybody and welcome to Out of the Short Box. Today our hero history is going to be about Superman. So, uh, Superman has a long history, of course, because he is technically the first ever uh, superhero in, in, in history. Uh, he's uh, figured himself as not only a, a great character in American media, but a media around the world. He is considered one of the greatest fictional characters ever written. Uh, so, a little bit of history on, on Superman. He was developed by Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster. Uh, they began creating the character in 1933. However, it did not actually get published until Action Comics number 1 in 1938. Um, Superman, uh, again, like I said, is credited on being the very first superhero. Uh, the first incarnation of Superman, though, he was not a superhero. Instead, he was a super villain. Uh, he was much different than how we had him today. Originally, uh, Jerry Siegel and Joe uh, envisioned the character as a bald, telepathic villain who actually wanted to take over the world. Um, that version appeared in a story called The Reign of the Superman, um, which appeared in a uh, fanzine uh, magazine uh, called Science Fiction, uh, The Advanced Guard of Future Civilization. Uh, and that appeared around 1933 or so. Um, there are still uh, tidbits of it today that you can grab and you can see. It's an interesting story. Uh, but that was actually the first incarnation uh, of Superman. Uh, Joe Schuster didn't like that. He thought there could be much, much more to the character. So they worked and they, they gave us the character uh, that we have today. Uh, they drew inspiration from their Jewish faith, uh, a lot of the stories that they grew up with, primarily Moses and Samson, uh, they integrated those two characters into who uh, Superman uh, was going to be. Uh, even uh, uh, later on, uh, developing the character even more, uh, they drew from other Jewish uh, stories down the line. Uh, the drawing of Superman was actually inspired... Um, by Circus Strongman. A lot of people wonder where the whole underwear outside the pants thing came from, and that was primarily because during that time, Circus Strongman, uh, that was the outfits that they wore. They wore the leggings with the underwear on the outside, um, and they were considered strong men. Uh, so that that's what that portrayed, and that's why a lot of the early superheroes had that same portrayal, uh, because that type of drawing represented strength, and that's what they really wanted to show in these superheroes. Superheroes was uh, their strength on all facets, not just their uh, physical self, but on their uh, internal as well. So most everyone knows Superman's origin story. Uh, Superman's uh, an extremely popular character, so a lot of people know of his his story. Um, he was he's an alien. He comes from the planet Krypton. Uh, Krypton was under environmental stress. Uh, it determines what type of origin you want to go to. Uh, originally, we didn't get a lot of detail on why Krypton uh, was about to blow. That's been uh, rendered many different times. Some say it was because of their uh, red sun uh, that they were uh, about to um, go from there. Some others have it with their intense gravitational pull. Some have it with the pollution and the mining that the Kryptonians did. Um, and some of it just have it being a natural event that occurred. But uh, the reason for Krypto Krypton's destruction has been changed many times over and has recently um, uh, changed as well. Uh, here currently with uh, Brian Michael Bendis' run on Superman, we were introduced to an enemy called Rogel Czar, which apparently had a hand in the destruction of Krypton. But uh, Superman's uh, original name on Krypton was Kal-El. His father was Jor-El. And uh, Jor-El was a scientist on Krypton, and he knew that the destruction was imminent. So in order to save his son, he created a spacecraft and sent the spacecraft out into space um, before Krypton exploded. Of course, the, the spaceship left Krypton, and then it crash-landed outside of Smallville, Kansas, where it was found uh, by Jonathan and Martha Kent. Uh, Jonathan and Martha Kent uh, visited the spaceship, and they saw that inside was a baby boy. Um, 
fearing for this boy's life and them not having children of their own, they took the child under their wing and raised them, the boy as their son. Uh, gave him the name Clark, and he was Clark Kent. Uh, Clark later on in his teenage years discovered his uh, super abilities, his superpowers that was given to him and uh, began training. Uh, he, and then, of course, as he, when he uh, grew up, he eventually left uh, the small town of Smallville, Kansas, uh, to go live in Metropolis, where he would, be, uh, again, uh, get a job at Daily Planet and become uh, Superman and help uh, the city. Uh, he left Smallville because he wanted to put his powers to good use. So Superman's powers. Superman in the original comic book didn't have the same powers uh, that that we know of today. Uh, when he was first in the comic book, he had the super strength, he had the ability to run fast, and he was able to leap um, very high and very far. He actually did not have the ability to fly. Uh, he did not have his heat vision or his x-ray vision. All of those things were given later on by the popularity of the Adventures of Superman radio show, which was going on in the 1940s. And as the radio show was going on, they adopted that into the comic books as well. Um, and also, the radio show was the one that ultimately gave Superman his weakness uh, with kryptonite. Uh, that actually came out of the radio show as well, which the radio show was very popular. is considered uh, still today as one of the most highest listened to radio broadcasts ever in radio history. Um, it went on for a number of years, um, had Kellogg's as a major sponsor, and gave us some of the most popular uh, Superman stories that we have today. Um, now, how did Superman... Uh, get these powers while it was uh, while Superman had these uh, through his who through his genetic line. The reason why they were evident here on Earth is because of the difference between Krypton and Earth. Number one, Krypton had a red sun. Uh, the red sun was normal for Kryptonians. Uh, it kept them pretty much on par with how we are today. Um, however, with Earth having a yellow sun, uh, Superman's cellular structure, his body, actually acts like a solar battery, absorbs the yellow sun's energy. Um, so as Superman's exposed to the sun, his whole body becomes charged with solar power. Uh, it continues to charge all throughout the day, uh, so that way he can use his powers even at night and when he's in space as well. Um, his body is just one big solar generator, so to speak. Um, also, it is told in the comic book that because of the difference in gravitational pull on Krypton and Earth, it also gives Superman... Uh, his enhanced abilities to be able to fly, um, you know, stuff like that. Apparently, Krypton had a much heavy, uh, heavier gravitational pull. Um, so, uh, while they were able to leap great bounds on Krypton, uh, they were not capable of flying due to the gravitational pull. Um, so, that's how the comic books explain uh, most of his powers. Um, and again, we got a lot of that from the radio show as well. Uh, Superman, again, has a uh, storied history. Uh, we all know of his, when he moved into Metropolis, he began working for the Daily Planet so he could keep a secret uh, hidden identity so people did not realize that he was Superman. Um, and he also wanted that to protect his family, uh, Jonathan and Martha Kent. It's been alluded many times in the story that if Jonathan and Martha had not come into the picture, that Superman would probably allow everyone to know who he was, what he did, where he was at all times. However, he had to take a secret identity to keep Jonathan and Martha safe because he knew that his enemies would eventually target those that he cared about. Uh, Superman... Of course, fell in love with Lois Lane, a fellow reporter at the Daily Planet, and uh, would eventually marry her in the comic books, and also would um, have a son named Jonathan, who would become Superboy. Um, it's a great run right now by Brian Michael Bendis. If you have not uh, picked it up, I highly, highly advise to. Um, he's doing an excellent job writing uh, Superman right now. Uh, he brought back uh, a lot of the stuff... Um, 
that was kind of destroyed during what we call the New 52 run. He kind of, uh, during this rebirth period, he's brought back some of the most important features of the Superman mythos, and he's also adding to it too, um, but keeping that in respect to the current line as well. Um, he's doing a great job with Jonathan uh, Kent and, and the story behind his relationship with both um, his father and his mother. Um, at the Action Comics line is dealing uh, more uh, with uh, with Superman being Clark Kent. Um, you see a lot of that in there, and then the Superman line has is dealing with Superman being Superman, of course. Um, it's neat, uh, since there's two different comic books which address the storyline, um, Brian Michael Bendis, who, is, who, by the way, is the creator of Miles Morales' uh, Spider-Man, um, he's doing a very good job writing it because it's showing both sides of his personality. So I highly advise catching up on the new Superman run. Uh, definitely get it. Also, Naomi just came out, and I'm going to do a piece on Naomi next week. Um, that's also been uh, it's just one issue in. The second issue comes out today, I believe, at some time. Uh, but it's been a very uh, interesting... No, the first comic book was very interesting and looks like to add on to the Superman lore as well. So, uh, again, he married Lois and, and had a child, Jonathan, with her. Uh, one of the most famous uh, storylines that ever took place in the Superman mythos, um, which Superman has uh, became a popular character very quickly. Uh, Superman is, is all the credit on why comic books uh, really spurned the moment. We had a combination of Superman and Batman come out, and those were DC's two strongest characters, and really helped spur the golden age of comic books and to help comic books get off the ground. Uh, like I said, merchandising began happening. Uh, I mean, pretty much everybody in American lore, Superman, has become popular. You can mention that name to most everybody, and even if they're not a comic book fan, fan can tell you the story. There's been many movies made about uh, Superman. There's been television shows made about Superman. Uh, some of the most popular ones, of course, uh, was in the 1978 movie uh, starring Christopher Reeve, um, who I, is my Superman, I always call that. We've had recent reincarnations of Superman uh, with Man of Steel, uh, The Return of Superman. Uh, those movies, of course, The Justice League and Batman vs. Superman. Um, we've had those incarnations of Superman uh, come through, uh, but one of the most uh, f so he Superman really enveloped this character that was held highly by American public and was extremely popular on all levels. So uh, this the, one of the most popular story arcs was. Uh, breathtaking to the American public, so much so that it was one of the first comic books to ever actually get exposure on the news on a daily basis, and that was The Death of Superman, uh, which happened in uh, Superman number 75 in November of 1992 where he was killed by in a battle with Doomsday. He did defeat Doomsday, but in the process he lost his life. Uh, and we have the famous picture of his uh, tattered uh, cape uh, flying like a flag in the background. Uh, that was one of the most pivotal moments. It was also considered number three most best-selling comic book of all time. Uh, DC's market share doubled uh, when they had this comic book. And, but of course, uh, it's comic books, and of course, with a character like Superman, they couldn't keep him dead. Uh, so uh, during the middle time of this period, they had something called the Reign of the Supermen, which was in different incarnations of Superman, and which was a throwback to the original uh, idea of Superman, not the original idea, so to speak, of him being a supervillain, but that title, The Reign of the Superman, um, they they took from that to, to do a little bit of history, but then they eventually, of course, uh, brought the character back. Um, Superman's always been a popular uh, character. Um, here's some little fun facts, if you all uh, didn't know. Um, a lot of people always make fun of this, on how do, or people that naive in Metropolis, that they can't tell Clark Kent... <laughs> from Superman, you know, he just puts on glasses. How can they not tell that that uh, Clark Kent is actually Superman? And the comic books actually explain that a lot. Um, number one, uh, Superman's powers are a lot more that we don't realize, and the comic book is expounded on those. Again, I mentioned how his body is uh, 
is solar radiated, and that Superman has uh, because of the, it's it's solar powered, and he has this phenomenal power over his own body. Um, he can actually control his heartbeat. He can slow his heart rate down. He can actually lower his body temperature through just the thought process. Um, one of the things that DC has told us is that he can actually cause his spine to compress, making himself inches smaller. And they say that's what he does when he becomes Clark Kent. That Superman will actually compress his spine, have poor posture, and we hear that in the comic book because we hear uh, people like uh, Perry White and all them say, you know, straighten up, Clark. You know, why you always got to look slouchy? And you know, so Superman intentionally does some of these things to hide who who his characteristic is. One of the most famous ones is that he's clumsy. Uh, Clark is notoriously clumsy, always spilling coffee, always tripping in the office, always fumbling through his papers, always dropping things. you know, so so he gives this fumbling idiot type, you know, not idiot, but this fumbling person type, uh, uncoordinated person, so they never draw the two together. And like I said, with his ability to compress his, his spine and make himself shorter, that's another one. To, and then another comic book uh, also as well um, said that his glasses were actually special, that the glass in his glasses were actually uh, Kryptonian type glass, which actually was able to give people the perception and help mess with their mind, uh, kind of do this um, mild, invasive unava- uh, hypnotism in a way uh, to where people don't pr- recognize or put the two together that Clark Kent could potentially be Superman. Um, however, in the comic books now, um, there are some folks who know that Clark is Superman man, primarily Lois Lane. Lois found out, uh, of course, many years ago, and of course now in the comic books, they are uh, husband and wife. So let me give you some Superman uh, reading material, uh, just so you can go out there and you can go online and purchase these or go to your uh, local uh, store and get them, and I'll give you a little brief overview of the storyline. One of my favorite Superman stories ever is called All-Star Superman, and it was written by Grant Morrison. It's an alternate uh, timeline story, but uh, in the story, uh, Lex Luthor has uh, sent off a bomb uh, to be exploded on the sun, destroying the sun. Um, Superman goes to save the scientists as well as, of course, to save the sun. Uh, In the process, uh, Superman actually gets uh, hyper uh, uh, hyper powered by the sun, uh, he gets too much solar radiation in his cells, and it actually causes a form of cancer in in his system that no one can cure because of his uh, unique genetic makeup. Uh, so he's basically given a death sentence. Uh, so what the comic book All Star Superman does is it shows how Superman spends his time over the next year what he does, and it's beautiful. You see uh, the true uh, moral heart of Superman. He's still battling some issues and still battling some bad guys throughout the story going through certain feats, Uh, but you see his relationship with Lois expand. Uh, You see see their relationship grow. Um, One of my favorite ones is he actually goes to a children's hospital, um, kind of like St. Jude's, uh, where there's children that are dying of cancer and other diseases, and he actually puts them on a school bus and he flies them to all these different places in the world. They see the pyramids of Egypt, they see all this stuff, and uh, it, 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 and you see the joy on these children's faces, and you, you can see the beauty of the Superman character and how it was originally written. This loving man who came from a different world, uh, but he loves, he loves everyone. And and that's why I get emotional with Superman, because it's such a beautiful character, because he loves and he cares for everybody, even his enemies. There's many times in the comic books we see where he spares his enemies, he saves his enemies, he does stuff uh, to help his enemies, and it's all because of love. Because he believes in the power of love, he believes in freedom, he believes in caring, and it's just a touching um, overall figure. Uh, so definitely pick up All Star Superman, written by Grant Morrison. It's such a popular story; you can find it pretty much anywhere, uh, comic book store wise. They shouldn't have to special order it. I think most of them keep it on their shelves because it's that popular story. If not, don't worry; they can easily obtain it uh, by ordering it. Um, 
Superman slash Brainiac is also a great story. He goes into the Brainiac character. Uh, Superman Birthright uh, talks about his powers more and his, his connection to Jor-El and Krypton. Our Earth One Superman goes back to the origin story and gives us a little bit more of <laughs> and kind of what we see uh, today. Of course, the death of Superman I've already uh, talked about. Of course, the return of Superman. Uh, Superman's Secret Origin goes more into his Kryptonian heritage, so uh, definitely talk about that. A unique one to read is Superman Red Sun. Uh, this is a alternate storyline, but it's one of the uh, one of the great uh, comic books out there. Um, and it was hypothesized on what the story is about. Is they hypothesized what if Superman didn't land in America? What if he actually uh, crash landed in Soviet Russia at the time? And so that's why they call it Red Sun, R E D S O N, Superman Red Sun. And in it, Superman, <coughs> of course, takes on communist beliefs. Um, his uh, insignia, instead of being the S shield, is the uh, scythe uh, or the sickle and the hammer. And then, uh, but it, it, he actually becomes uh, a Russian Soviet leader, a uh, communist leader, and he goes against some of the rebels in there. And, and it's just an interesting story, an interesting take on what would happen if Superman took place in another country besides America. The Injustice series as well, which started as the video game Injustice, but that has been adopted in comic book form. Um, that kind of shows us what would happen if, uh, if Superman was eventually triggered. If there was a tragedy in his life that changed his view and his perspective on mankind... Uh, here is a creature who has the powers of a god. Would he take us under his submission and rule us like a tyrant? And it takes on um, from that one. And then, of course, one of my favorites, uh, written by Alan Moore, Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow, um, is an excellent read as well. Uh, some other fun facts um, that you may not know. This is just one of them that I always want to do, just to kind of give you all something trivial, but did you all know? Did you all know there's a Superman in every episode of Seinfeld? Uh, in every episode of Seinfeld, there's a Superman located somewhere, and that's because of Jerry Seinfeld's love for the character. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Just a real brief rundown of uh, of Superman. There's much more to him, and I'll go on, uh, talk more about him in future podcasts. So until then, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for listening.